Great. Um, and Lisa, I'm going to make you a co-host, Lisa. Okay, your co-host. So welcome, welcome everybody uh, to another session of the Spring into Summer series. Um, this uh, today's session will be by, as you know, because you're here, by Lisa Kresge, and Lisa will be um, her. The topic of her presentation is. I hope I can get the pronunciation right. Tigmia, Tigmi, sorry, Tigmia Taurus Arctic, Arctica, Arctica, Tigmia Taurus Arctica. That's my Latin is not that great. My Fran my French is better than my Latin. <laughs> Bringing the past to life through sculpture. Um, I'm David Globerman, and I'm the coordinator with supporting cast with Pal Ogwa, and I'll be your host today. Um, so I've asked you, if, if you don't mind, to mute your mics, which I see you all have. And again, uh, this, this presentation is being recorded uh, and will be put on our, uploaded on our um, PAL YouTube channel, which, you, which I would uh, encourage you to check out. Um, all, this, all the sessions of Spring into Summer, uh, the Spring into Summer series um, are being um, uploaded on our PAL YouTube channel, as well as all the um, documentation that goes along with that. I, I don't know if any documentation is up yet, but it will be hopefully by this week. So I would encourage you to do that. And when you watch the channel, the PAL YouTube channel, I would encourage you to hit share and like. And um, if you have any comments about um, the, the presentation itself, um, like narrative comments, um, Please send them to me at um, supportingcast at palottawa.org. That's supportingcast at palottawa.org. There will be a, um, a survey sent to all participants, uh, like everybody that's here today will receive a survey. We'd appreciate if you could fill that out as it informs our future programming and you know gives us an idea of how we can improve our product. And, and for people that um, register, or yeah, for people that register but aren't here today, they will also be receiving the survey. So they'll have a chance to fill, fill up the, the survey providers with their comments. Um, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, feel free to um, uh, send them through the chat function at the bottom of your screen. And Lisa will be um, uh, looking at those questions as they come in. Um, if she doesn't get to them during the presentation, then, then at the end, she'll have a chance to do that. Um, so uh, just to tell you about a little bit about Lisa, um, Lisa Kresge is a ceramic artist and painter who explores the visual storytelling potential of the clay medium through sculpture and installation. She investigates themes of nature, and she's in a wonderful place in Chelsea to do that, themes of nature, history, and time. Lisa creates immersive worlds in which to look for connections and to pose questions on essential uh, concerns for humanity and the environment. Among her achievements, her most recent in international recognition includes finalist in the 2020 Taiwan International Ceram Ceramics Biennial, uh, honorable mention in the Korea International Ceramic Biennial in 2019, and being, and being awarded a three month uh, 2019 Taiwan Ceramics Residency hosted by the new Taipei, Taipei City Ying Ceramics Museum. She is also the recipient of the Prix de Calc um, in 2017, work of the year in the Udaway uh, of the Conseil des, Arts, Conseil des Arts et des Lettres du, du, du Québec, and for her 2016 solo public exhibition, uh, Match in Gatineau in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So uh, without any further delay, I, let's give a warm applause, even though uh, she won't be able to hear it. To Lisa Kresge. I can imagine it. Thank you. 
Thank you, David. And uh, thank you so much uh, for having me part of, be part of this series. Uh, it's just um, because they are all, all this, they are all recorded. So you can go back and, and uh, watch them at your leisure. And it's really just been um, so fascinating. And uh, uh, oui, so uh, je vais donner uh, aujourd'hui, je vais donner um, un atelier de sculpture. So I'll be giving a uh, sculpture workshop today. And uh, so welcome to everyone. Welcome to my studio. And, uh, but before I give the workshop, I'll give you a little tour of works that, um, that I have made on the, on the theme of birds and uh, why that's, why I find that such an interesting uh, visual element because the, the sculpture that I'll be making is of a prehistoric bird, un oiseau préhistorique qu'on va faire, uh, on va sculpter. Bon, alors, uh, Je vais juste renverser ma, ma caméra. All right, so I have my camera around. So I'll just show you a few pieces that I have um, outside in my outside gallery. Really, I do um, so much of my work outdoors and it's really influenced by, by nature. There are so many birds around, uh, just around me. Um, so I think when you're making something, you, you really uh, tend to access that, that visual memory that you have. Um, but uh, you can also think about, you know, uh, ideas that you want to express. Et alors, tu peux uh, t'exprimer de, de tes concerns personnels. Quand tu fais une image, pour moi, les oiseaux, uh, c est, c est, ils se trouvent tout partout dans le monde. Uh, birds are found everywhere in the world. Uh, ça traverse um, les uh, the uh, borders, they, they migrate vast distances. So it gives you a different perspective on borders. So in this, uh, in this work, I've incorporated imagery of maps um, into this piece called Migration. And uh, I was thinking about uh, homelessness and, and uh, displacement. And this was from, uh, I think around 10 years ago. And uh, I had some pieces like, uh, I, I realized um, this work at the, uh, where's my pictures here? I'm just fiddling with my pictures. At uh, the Karsh Masson Gallery. And again, I had a full installation out here in my studio. And um, right, so that's one way that, that I'm approaching. I love the, the subject of birds is that um, they really, I find that they really connect so well in, in different, uh, with so many different cultures because they're found all around the world. They're found uh, in cities um, as well as the country. So it's, it's something that people really um, tend, to, uh, tend to gravitate towards in terms of cultural expression, religious expression, uh, the idea of the soul. Um, these marks here called rookery. Um, let's see. I uh, began these this series as uh, as part of the um, the Rideau Canal Festival. Uh, it was um, to mark the Rideau Canal having become um, a World Heritage Site, and my response to this was to build uh, this um, parallel history of uh, of the uh, Great Blue Heron and. Um, so you can see that it's um, I'm I'm being representational in my work, but also I'm leaving room for narrative because this is really um, the storytelling is uh, is very important to me in my work. Um, Lisa, Lisa, sorry, yeah. it's David. Sorry to interrupt. Would you be able sure. to come on full screen? Yeah. How is it that I? Let's see. Sorry for the technical here. Uh, Sure. Sorry about that. Hmm. Seems to be my uh, my full screen seems to be uh, frozen here. Just uh, would you suggest just uh, tapping the? <laughs> um, I think uh, it, it might be. It possibly might be because there are some 
some people on camera. Um, uh, maybe if okay. people could shut um, off, off their uh, videos. If they could shut off their videos and see, we'll see what happens. Um, excuse me, have you done a Zooms before? Right, maybe that's, uh, I see someone speaking. Is that Allison? Yes, yes. Hi, Every Allison. Hi, Lisa. Everybody has to put their own screen okay. on full view if that's what you want. Yeah, select speaker view. Yeah, or, up at yes, the top exactly. Right. Yeah. Has everybody found the little icon with view? It's usually in the top right corner. Mm, okay, well, let's see. I think I'll just... Uh... So Lisa, it, is it possible for you to swing your phone around to a horizontal format? The, uh, the mm -hmm. iPhone always just gives you that vertical column. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that's the problem. Uh, I'm not quite hearing what's uh, right. what's going on at the moment, uh, but uh, should I maybe I should just continue? Is that yes? Yeah. I'll just uh... yeah, just keep going. Sorry, David, I can't quite hear you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just um, keep going. It's fine. Just keep going. So I've kind of lost, uh, I've lost the sound, David, I'm afraid. Um, I can see me and uh, it's on. The, uh, the different screens with the participants. They're all just uh, yes, keep going, Lisa. Just... Thank you, Hillary. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, I can't really hear anyone at the moment, uh, but I'll just uh, keep going. I'll turn my screen around here. I'm looking at this uh, at a wreath that I have on my door just before um, just before we go into my studio. Uh, these works I created for um, an exhibition at Craft Ontario uh, where I was looking at, uh, at Toronto Harbour before it was uh, dredged and it was uh, before industrialization and it was full of these uh, cattails that are the, the canoeing. Et puis uh, j'ai fait cet oiseau, um, but with uh, I made the wings uh, uh, from cattails. Alors uh, ça c'est on peut utiliser d'autres matériaux uh, quand on fait le uh, l'œuvre. Okay, so we'll go in now. Apologies for the the small screen again, but we'll just go through. Um, I'm going through quickly into the studio here, um, looking for, um, again, for pieces that, uh, that have birds <laughs> um, and bird imagery. So um, these are some pieces here that I'll, I'll just pass over quickly. They, I'm creating this for an exhibition upcoming at uh, Galerie Morgan. And uh, it's the idea of, um, of the, the rookery. Um, so this colony of a great blue heron, but through time, and um, and uh, so this, uh, oh, there we go, I'm on full screen, yay. <laughs> um, so this is um, a work, like I mentioned, I'd, I'd begun this 10 years ago um, for, for uh, the Rideau Canal Festival. And, uh, but I was doing similar work, maybe I can show you at, um, at, uh, in Taiwan, um, I was developing uh, this theme of um, uh, of the of a bird colony through time, and looking at, of course, Taiwan uh, has an incredible um, uh, bird uh, population that uh, that migrates through, and uh, and also, yeah. So I, just learning from other artists and learning different ways to. Um, to work with with this theme, I think really um, my work really evolved in this way. So I'll be um, I'll be sharing this uh, uh, at uh, on August twenty sixth at uh, Galerie Montcalm, and uh, just uh, coming around my studio here. Um, I'm looking for uh, works with birds and and um, 
I, uh, I've often uh, represent a, a cormorant. I find um, that the history of the cormorant in, uh, in particular is, uh, is so fascinating to me that um, it's, a, it's a native species and yet which was, um, it was threatened. Alors c'était, um, uh, ils étaient en moins, en moins, beaucoup moins en nombre dans les années 60, 70. So there was a DDT affected many birds and, and uh, the cormorants very strongly. And however, um, they were able to make a really strong uh, comeback um, such that they are now um, being cre uh, considered as an invasive species. So um, I find that this, this very strange relationship that, uh, that we have with, with, with cormorants really speaks to um, sometimes the, the strange relationship we have with nature. So I was uh, just fascinated with, um, with the cormorants. And um, let's see. And yeah, so, uh, in, so, so I was making this work about with cormorants and I made a large piece uh, for Craft Ontario on this subject and, uh, and for the Gardner Museum, I made the cormorant was coming through in, in my narratives. Um, but uh, then I guess, around, yeah, four years ago, I read an article of, um, of a discovery in, in Nunavut in the high Arctic. And uh, what was discovered was, a, um, was this here, the Tingmiatornis arctica, it was named. And the, um, the word uh, Tingmiat, in Inuktitut means those that fly. So um, they discover just a, a small um, um, humerus bone, um, and then they had to to piece the the uh, the rest of the bird together with uh, with the the knowledge that there were other um, um, uh, other sort of pre prehistoric birds. Um, in the Cretaceous period, also, but um, the the um, the site where this bird was found, uh, there were also um, uh, crocodile-like uh, creatures that were that were found. There were turtles. There were um, uh, bowfins. So um, they realized that this this uh, bird would have needed to, uh, in order to survive in this habitat, this bird would have needed to have teeth. And, um, and the environment that it lived in, um, which was uh, 90 million years ago, uh, would have been um, sort of like um, present day Florida. So, uh, so semi-tropical year round. And, uh, and just so this, this image of, of a bird with, with teeth, sort of a tooth on bone, I thought was uh, is very visceral. Um, I had very uh, emotional, visceral reaction, uh, particularly thinking about um, um, the, the extreme peril um, that the Arctic is in now and, and the wildlife um, is beginning to suffer. So I, I began making, I'll just uh, turn my camera around. Um, I was making uh, work around this. This is a, a painting. So I made a, a body of work that was meant to be uh, presented at uh, LA Pie Gallery uh, in September, but it was held over because of our, <laughs> our wonderful COVID. Um, but it, I will again, I will present um, this body of work. So what I have here and, and other works in, um, in uh, September. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I, I was making work. This is a painting, um, an acrylic painting that I'd made this year where I'm thinking about uh, the, the Tingmia Tornis and, but I'm just so, sort of suggesting it in a, in a contemporary lang um, uh, landscape. So the, um, the hills in, in the background where perhaps um, we're seeing forest fire. It also suggests a, a volcanic activity. So it's it's playing back and forth in time between uh, contemporary um, um, environmental perils and 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 how um, and yeah and times when when um, when there was also these extreme conditions. Um, so, so this is this is I'll just sort of pan over. Um, a body of work that I made here. Oh, I'll go up here. This is the 
my representation of, of the Tingmia tornus. And uh, although um, archaeologists suggest that it, it looked somewhere, something between um, a cormorant and a, um, and a large seagull, I, 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 my representation is more cormorant-like because of my interest in, in cormorants. So as you can see, the, the teeth, this is made from wood, but the teeth are very, um, uh, the teeth are, are porcelain and they're um, highlighted in these little panels um, where I created, I sort of staged these little uh, semi-tropical landscapes and, um, and uh, made these little, um, tiny little cormorants and, and stage these, these interactions in these gardens. And, and um, other works that I, that I made that I'm, I guess they're still in progress. Um, alors c'est comme si cette œuvre j'ai pris l'idée de l'Atlantification, c'est où les eaux euh, froides de l'Arctique viennent euh, se mélanger avec euh, euh, se mélange avec les eaux plus chaudes de l'Atlantique, euh, se mélange mélange avec les eaux froides de l'Arctique. Alors euh, ça commence à se passer de, de plus en plus et puis euh, c'est on voit des, des animaux et des, des poissons des oiseaux euh, dans l'Arctique maintenant qui euh, qui n'étaient pas là au, auparavant alors euh, moi j'ai fait j'ai pris l'idée d'une grande d'une baleine à bosse et avec cela j'ai fait euh, euh, un paysage euh, arctique alors ça représente la glace peut-être qui fond euh, comme on lit maintenant, ça, ça fond euh, de plus en plus euh, gravement à chaque année. Et même que c'est vraiment décidé que non, euh, on n'aura pas de la glace euh, à, à temps plein. Alors ça, c'est vraiment euh, désastreux pour les animaux qui, qui habitent à l'Arctique. Alors j'ai mis euh, le Tingmia Tornus Arctica comme un, un sous, it's like a threat. Alors, um, so this... Um, the uh, Atlantification of the of the Arctic Ocean getting warmer and warmer, warmer makes it uh, very perilous for um, for wildlife who have evolved very specifically uh, in these very extreme climates. So they they're not uh, flexible. They can't. They really have no other climate to go to. Um, but also the um, the animals who who are um, who are benefiting perhaps now, such as some birds, um, you can see in their diet um, that they, their ranges are increasing. They are also um, subject to extreme weather conditions and, and also therefore endangered as well, or, or endangered in the future. Um, and, um, and often um, traveling seabirds are used like a canary in the coal mine. Um, we can see that their diets are changing dramatically as their um, as their ranges are increasing. So that's what I'm um, that's what I'm looking at in this work. And uh, here I've, I've depicted again using the form of um, of the the um, the whale uh, la la baleine à bosse avec euh, ses nageoires. Uh, J'ai mis le the icebreaker qui représente pour moi um, uh, a threat of, um, of resource exploitation in the Arctic now that the passage is no longer uh, frozen. Um, so again, I, I've, uh, I put these, these birds on the icebreaker and uh, yeah, so it's, it's a way of sort of dealing with these personal concerns, but also um, as you can see, I, put, I often put um, people in my landscapes and I think that's, um, to represent the need to um, to bear witness, I think uh, as we've uh, archaeology and science are are really um, it's so important to stay engaged. Um, I think it's 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 becoming apparent that it's uh, that it's crucial um, to engage with it. And um, yeah, so these are some. I'll just. Turn the camera around. So these are some of the works that that I made about this on this subject, and um, and how uh, how 
I approached it. Alors, ça, c'est des offres que moi, j'ai faites sur le sujet, mais euh, vous pouvez, euh, euh, chacun de vous euh, a ses propres, euh, everyone has their own knowledge, leur, euh, leur intérêt, euh, ce qu'ils ont à donner, à s'exprimer. Alors, c'est pas, euh, c'est juste euh, euh, mon, ma perspective, mais euh, vous pouvez prendre ça dans, dans, tout, euh, dans votre propre direction. Alors, moi, je m'installe ici pour Uh, on va commencer la classe. So now we're going to do the, the, the demonstration. So I'll just get uh, set up. And um, yeah, so this is the fun part for me where I get to, uh, I get to make. And uh, like I said, so I have, you know, I'm working from a, a large body of work and, and uh, existing ideas. Um, but I might, if it's something completely new to me, um, I might, um, I might go in and look for um, some, some um, background material, some um, resources, um, depending on um, some visual resources, depending on the, the level of, of realism that I want. Uh, it's very, um, if you want something very realistic, then you need, you'll need something that, uh, you know, to, to fill in the, the visual information for you. Alors, euh, j'ai des références comme pour m'aider si je veux de quoi très réalistique. Euh, j'ai trouvé euh, une image d'un autre euh, oiseau préhistorique. Because they don't have a full, uh, full picture, they only have one or two bones of, these, of this uh, exciting um, find. Um, uh, I, I looked at this pictures of uh, an ithia, ithia on it, ithia, <laughs> anyway, it was another prehistoric bird that was very uh, common, um, but more southerly. That's why this, um, the Artemia tornus is so exciting um, archaeologically, because it, it wasn't known that they, um, that they would live that far. So, um, of course, this um, uh, fossils have been found with, with teeth and um, and so, yeah, so I, I, I'm probably, I, I like to focus on the teeth because um, I'm interested in birds and no birds today have teeth. And, um, and that was because, um, that's because birds, it was too expensive, evolutionarily speaking. Um, it takes, uh, it would take around, I think, two months for the, for the birds to, inc uh, to grow the teeth in incubation, um, whereas now, um, without the teeth, they can incubate in weeks or even sometimes days. It's a very little bird. As he said, there, this oiseau is on the left. Ça peut développer très vitement et il y a moins de de sans les dents et il y a beaucoup moins de 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 chances de de prédation ou que de il y a de quoi de dangereux dans l'environnement. So environmental um, uh, conditions that could threaten it. Alors, uh, but although many birds will uh, still have one little tooth that remains, a little uh, egg tooth, so they can escape from the egg. So anyway, I just, I really love that idea. So I'll definitely, I definitely focus on, on the teeth when I'm making this bird. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's um, a little bit about my, the background material that I'll have. And then I get um, my, my materials, my physical materials. And um, what I have today is, I generally work in, in porcelain, but uh, today I have a sculpture of clay because it, um, it dries out um, much more evenly and uh, not as quickly. So I have some clay, but uh, if you don't, if you want to um, watch this video later and follow along, and you don't have access to clay, then that's perfectly, perfectly okay. Um, you can use Play-Doh, you can use plasticine. Um, you can actually, you can go find your own clay, or um, you can make a salt dough, just a flour, a lot of salt. You can look up recipes. I actually, for my um, for my university um, portfolio, um, I didn't have uh, access to uh, to clay. This was 
30 years ago. Um, so I made a, a salt dough uh, sculpture and painted it and it was, I was really, I mean, the long, it, the piece doesn't last very long, but you can make these pieces and photograph them if you want to build a, a portfolio on you or you know, have something like that. So, um, so right, so we have our clay and um, like to uh, generally wedge it just so that it's just to align all the little particles, but um, any material, you know, sort of, if it's plasticine, for instance, you want to, you know, warm it up. And if it's, uh, if it's a salt dough, you want to make sure that it's wet enough for, for you or dry enough for the right consistency. Alors, uh, vous pouvez uh, faire uh, n'importe quel, uh, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de, de matériaux de, de sculpture que vous voulez faire, la plasticine, de, Plato, <laughs> la pâte, uh, pâte à l'eau, uh, pâte à sel. Et puis, um, uh, tout, ça, c'est des matériaux de sculpture où on peut faire uh, des, des additions. So we can add onto it and we can also take away from it. So um, when we're doing that, um, what we'll do is we'll have some, we can have some tools. Um, so for instance, these, this is a clay tool that we'll we use for excavation of the surface. And um, we can also uh, add something to the, so if we we're making, for instance, a, the bird, which I will do, I, I tend to work um, in pieces and then um, add, add the pieces on. Some people work uh, clay more in the way that you would uh, plus de la façon que si c'était euh, um, la sculpture à pierre ou, ou du bois, where you have a single block and then you can, for instance, you can carve away. So that's another very uh, legitimate way of, of approaching clay. Um, it's really just, it's quite personal. Um, some people like that solidity. And then they'll, um, at the end, they'll cut the piece open and, and hollow it out and then put it back together. Um, it just, you know, just depends how comfortable you are. And uh, so what, but what I'll be doing more of an, of an add-on approach. Alors, moi, c'est plus, uh, je vais mettre uh, des uh, deux éléments ensemble. Alors, je vais, je vais faire des, je, je vais joindre uh, um, deux, deux ou trois ou quatre, je vais joindre les éléments. Alors, um, Pour faire ma base, pour faire la tête, je parlais que je disais que je prends comme des ressources. Je vois comme la ressource de la tête ici. C'est euh, alors je peux suivre ça. Je vois que y a des trous où euh, les yeux vont on va mettre les euh, yeux. Alors euh, on va commencer pour moi. Je vais faire euh, un pinch pot. So a pinch pot. So how we'll start the my head shape. Um, we have to when we're working with clay, which will be fire, we have to respect the idea of the need of the clay to um, to not uh, explode. So if it's too thick, there there'll be air bubbles trapped, and when it's being fired, it can explode. So I'm making what's called a pinch pot, where you just make a round uh, sort of ball you wedge together and then you stick your thumbs in and you can just turn and uh, you just get this natural hollow and um, so you can see and then once it's your fingers aren't uh, are too short for this you can just keep going and it it will um, try and uh, open outwards but uh, you can just uh, as long as you're attentive um, to the to the shape, then you can you know, bend it to your will, and um, and that's really about you know, using any sculptural medium. It's just just being really um, really attentive um, to to the piece to what you're making. So I'm sort of I'm making this um, this uh, sort of vessely shape. Um, and uh, I'm like the forme, it's the form of the pinceau, but I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I think now I'm going to put the place where the eyes, so I'm thinking of the crown, so I'm thinking of a skull, and I'm going to put the hole for the eyes, and 
quand je, quand je fais quand je fais ça, je pense que euh, j'ai ce que je peux faire, c'est la mettre. Uh, what I have here is a little turn, a little um, wheel in a sense. Um, but this I think was is for uh, you can buy them for cakes or you know kitchen uses, um, or you could even um, put it on a book so you can move it more easily, or you know sort of a piece of wood or something. Um, because it's uh, a three-dimensional object that you're making, and uh, you want to make sure that you can um, see the see the work in space, and and uh, and also it it for me it makes it a little more dynamic too. Um, I think you really I what's important for me when I'm making a piece is that I I try to uh, develop a relationship with it. Alors, je, je regarde dans l'entour, j'essaie de comme faire, I don't know if I talk to it, but uh, faire comme vraiment uh, develop a relationship with the work. And uh, particularly, maybe that's why I start with the eyes, um, because we're, we're just naturally programmed um, to look at eyes, we want to see the eyes. So um, I'm actually not going to put the eyes in now, but I have the eye sockets and that just immediately uh, draws my attention. Um, but what I will uh, do right now is I'll put ce que je, je vais faire maintenant, c'est je vais commencer le bec. Alors, euh, comme je dis, euh, les scientifiques, ont, ont, euh, les archéologues ont, ont pensé que, euh, que ça pourrait être comme un peu à, à, Doing will be a, a cormorant, so a seagull or a cormorant, but since I like cormorants, I'm so fascinated by cormorants. I have, um, I have some pictures of my, uh, this is a cormorant skeleton, so I'm, I'm really interested in the shape of the bill. I love this, um, this hooked end that um, a fishing predatorial uh, bird will have, but also this, um, it's almost like a, a flute. Um, shape, this carved shape, um, and I just find the way these two fit together is really, um, I kind of feel it viscerally, it's just, I find it's very soft and delicate, and it, um, it's, uh, when it's contrasted with this harder, sharper, um, more sort of aggressive shape, I like that, I really like that contradiction, so maybe I'll, um, J'aime euh, regarder le bec. C'est plus comme dur, c'est pointu, c'est pour comme attraper le poisson. Mais en bas, c'est, je ne sais pas pourquoi exactement, mais c'est très, une forme très douce, très, euh, très souple. Et puis peut-être c'est pour euh, laisser sortir l'eau, euh, je ne sais pas. Ça, ça, ça se peut bien. Um, so what I'll do is I can, um, I've made sort of a log shape and I'll carve it out with this carving tool. Um, if you do not have all these tools accessible, or, you know, you can have as many, you know, lots and lots of tools, and maybe you just don't have the one that, that you need. Um, so I often, I often raid my kitchen. Je suis souvent dans ma cuisine et prendre, tu sais, où je vois quelque chose de, euh, dans ma cuisine ou que, que je peux me servir, comme la cuillère ici. Si c'est une petite cuillère où je pense, ah, c'est, je regarde la forme, mais je pense toujours que, ah, ça, quand je fais un petit coin, ça pourra bien. Uh, so, don't, you know, don't be concerned if you don't have all the tools. Um, you can find things in nature. And that's the very same thing for, um, for brushes as well. I mean, you can pay uh, exorbitant prices for brushes or um, you can make your own uh, from, uh, or just, expensive ones as well <laughs> but uh, some of the most beautiful brushes are, uh, are handmade um, I tend not to use very expensive brushes on ceramics because of the coarse nature the uh, détruit coarse la, la ceramic the et les, les peint, les peintures ceramics um, c'est quand je trouve que c'est un peu uh, dur sur les, les, um, les fibres d'un pinceau Okay, so I'm making this um, the bottom part of the cormorant beak, and uh, I'm trying to get um, the, the shape that I want it to be sort of aerodynamic feeling. So once you've made, you know, a rough shape, um, 
then I'll go and I'll have some water here. Water is very, um, is, is something that, that's, uh, that really participates. It's sort of your, your teammate um, because it's what, um, what changes the clay from, from you know, just being uh, powder dust to being this, this uh, to being leather hard, to being this uh, supple uh, material that that we that um, bends itself so well, or uh, or to being um, this um, this kind of paste. Uh, this is something also that I make uh, this slurry where I mix water and uh, and clay together. Uh, so I have my clay and then. I have my water and I have my slurry, and then the clay. As you work it, it will you'll uh, see that it gets it dries out, and you have to be attentive to that because you don't want it too dry. It's it maybe a little bit easier to work with when it's dry, um, but then when you um, when you go to uh, to attach pieces, um, it will already have formed a, a memory of of you know, what, what it's shape, what it thinks that shape will be. So it's, uh, it's harder to get it to, um, to incorporate it into, into the, the rest of the, to the work. So, um, so what I'm doing now is I have, um, I do have various scratching, you know, carving um, tools to etch up the, um, a, um, the area of the clay where I want to make it join. Alors, j'ai beaucoup d'outils pour faire ça, mais souvent, j'utilise juste comme une, une lame d'exacto. C'est vraiment... Euh, euh, Celui-là est roulé, rouillé un peu et ça peut quand même un peu tacher. Si vous voulez ça blanc, 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 euh, faites attention de ne pas euh, utiliser des, des, des outils rouillés parce que ça, même euh, par la cuisson, on, on peut voir euh, le, le fer qui est dedans. Alors, euh, bah, pour moi, ça me dérange pas. J'aime ça la couleur. Euh, J'aime ça l'accident un peu. Um, so now I'm going to place the um, this bottom bill on. Now, I've, what I've noticed about a lot of um, uh, aquatic birds or or even hunting birds is that they have this a large kind of pouch that um, that allows them to swallow um, larger prey. So I'm just making that. This is this is the top part of my bill, and then this is the bottom part. Um, now this can be a point where uh, I could add some color if I wanted to. I mean, if if you think your beak is going to be open, um, you could you could um, paint it after, but you could also paint it um, paint it right now um, since this you won't. Uh, I don't think we're here for uh, long enough for me to dry this out and fire it. It would be a couple of days. So um, I'll just uh, show you what I have right now. What I have here are some ceramic paints. These are underglaze paints um, that I have that I often use. Uh, some people paint on top of a glaze surface. I usually fire the piece first and then and then apply the paint. But sometimes I, I paint some underglaze as well. Uh, stains. Um, the only thing is that you have to be, you know, mindful that um, if you're using stains, just to read up on them, maybe you don't want them to go through your, uh, into your skin, so maybe you want to wear rubber gloves. Uh, alors, pour, ça c'est les pains sous glaçure. Uh, L'habitude, j'utilise ça après, uh, quand c'est cuit, mais je peux quand même, si, si mettons le, le, bout, le bec va être ouvert, uh, je peux faire ça comme à ce stage ci um, alors uh, oh, c'est ça uh, mais il faut faire attention à uh, porter des gants si c'est un, un pain qui peuvent uh, qui peuvent entrer dans la peau pour, uh, pour se prendre soin de, de soi-même et puis um, so now I've got the, the bottom of my my bill just looking at that sheet and I just when I'm looking at this this gentle little curve I just really I think you know part of making art is just falling is just falling in love with what you see and um, 
And I think that that comes through. Si tu adores ce que, comme de ce que tu veux représenter, ça va, ça va se transmettre. Alors, um, so that's the, the bottom part of the bell. Et je vais uh, commencer avec le, à faire le, le haut. Um, so now I'm going to do the top part of the bell. If I was an ornithologist, I would probably know the, uh, the different names of the top and the bottom bell. Maybe they have different names. But um, what I do want to, what I am thinking about um, when I'm making this is that um, in terms of um, how I feel that it's expressing um, a bird's, uh, a beak of a bird is, uh, is a sense, it's, um, it's a nose. Um, so I'm making the, the nostril. Um, mais aussi, c'est un, so, alors le, ça fonctionne comme un nez. Je vais mettre la narine ici. Mais aussi, en même temps, c'est comme c'est la bouche. Alors, euh, il utilise pour manger, pour euh, faire leur cri. C'est très, très, très euh, important, leur cri d'oiseau, leur chanson, on va dire. Euh, avec euh, les oiseaux préhistoriques, on ne sait pas euh, vraiment s'ils si chantaient. Mais j'aimerais bien écouter la, la chanson d'un oiseau préhistorique. Peut-être euh, un jour, il va avoir euh, assez d'os de, de ce oiseau. On pourra faire une reconstruction. Uh, to reconstruct it so that you could hear its cry. I think that would be just... Uh, oh, I get, I get goosebumps. Là. Ça me donne la chair de poule juste en pensant. Euh, alors, c'est une bouche, mais c'est un sévané, c'est un outil, c'est pas juste ça, c'est comme une épée hein, pour un oiseau euh, pêcheur. So, for a fishing bird or a hunting bird, it's also a weapon. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, it has so many functions when you don't have hands. Um, they, it's also a grooming tool. Um, They'll, you know, birds will have to uh, groom their feathers such that, uh, particularly water birds, um, to keep them in, in the state where they are water repellent. Um, so it's constantly zipping up the feathers. So it's a really specialized uh, mechanical tool, um, as well as a hand, as well as a nose, as well as a mouth, as well as a weapon. Um, so I just uh, have, I think what I'm making, and I have sort of reverence for this, um, for this apparatus, for this almost uh, sentient thing that that's attached to them. Uh, it's so I find it so so special. Um, let me go my blades again. Uh, I'll see what other tools I have in here that um, mention the spoon. Um, this is just I mean I don't really use a lot of tools. There's so many, so many that are um, that are available. This one is good here, which is a, a rib, but it has a um, it's just a fine teeth. So cet outil ici, ça peut uh, uh, tu peux um, comme faire um, des, des you can score it. Alors c'est ça donne une belle uh, uh, surface sur laquelle, um, so it scores it well and gives it a good surface for you to um, to place your uh, to add your um, to to put your add on no matter what it is. I was going to say bill, but it could be any part. Um, might as well add a little paint. Je faire encore un peu de, de peinture. So now. What I want to do now is that um, I like the, the cleanness of, of a line sometimes with, with this uh, along the edge of the beak. Um, but, uh, but my, see, I'm noticing that my clay is, is just, I've gotten it too wet and it's starting to bend and, and uh, it's not, it's going to be difficult to carve at this point. So what I'll do is um, I'll add some of my, slurry here and I'll score, did I score this up? You have to make sure, be really careful, make sure you score both sides. 
And it's the same, I guess, if you're using plasticine or even the salt dough, adding water and just scoring it. If you're um, if you're adding two parts, now it would be. Um, see, I made it a little longer, but I want it to like in this one. I want it to fold over, but maybe I won't close it yet because I want to kind of cut this down a little bit and. Um, so while I'm making it, I'm kind of imagining, you know, maybe I'll take a break as well if it's, I'm finding it's too wet and uh, I'll just imagine what, uh, you know, what sounds it would have been making, what it would be, um, what it would be doing. And that can sometimes uh, inspire me as to, you know, what I want to say with the piece. And I just, I don't always come at it with, you know, with a set intention. I lot, I, uh, I like to allow the material to, to kind of direct me and tell a story as well. For um, moi, j'aime, si je commence pas toujours avec une idée complètement définie, j'aime comme être en participation avec l'objet que je crée. Et puis, alors, c'est comme je me raconte des histoires ou comme celui-là, il a l'air un peu. So little happy because que j'ai mis le 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 bec le sous bec est un peu plus grand que que le bec en haut alors tu vois ça ça fait comme un, un drôle de, de sourire alors peut-être je suis de bonne humeur aujourd'hui et puis ça ça se transmet so often that'll happen too your mood will of a, on a day you'll come in with a specific idea and then your uh, just your general mood can can be transmitted into into a work of art, into your the piece that you're making, and um, and don't worry about. Um, I think it's really really important not to think of your work as a work of art rather than um, you know just just playing it. You, you don't want to do anything. You don't want to have any thoughts that will prevent you from um, from being relaxed and and being um, creative. So let me switch this around to this side here. Um, so yeah, I always try to to uh, to remind myself that um, that just that I'm having you know just to have a lot of fun and uh, um, not put too much uh, pressure on myself because it's often when you're when you're having fun that you um, that you're sort of transported and. Uh, I don't, I don't think I can, um, often people will ask me how I've come up with certain ideas and, and, you know, I can't even pinpoint exactly how, you know, it's, it's just a progression and it's working with the material and, and directing it, um, just being responsive to, you know, to what, what the work is telling me that I, that I feel is important about what I'm, what I'm making. So now I'm, um, I'm thinking that the clay is, you know, quite damp and it's sort of in this part here is slumping a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to want to do, I think is normally I might go, well, if I had, you know, all day, I would probably, you know, just leave it. You can leave it overnight as long as you wrap it really well in, um, in plastic or if you don't want to use plastic, um, a wax cloth um something to prevent the moisture from escaping and if it's um but just you know keep checking on it too if you've had put too much moisture you might come uh, to your work the next day and find a puddle so you don't want that so alors, on peut l'emballer le laisser la soir dans du plastique ou, ou uh, un petit matériau uh, ciré pour, uh, pour uh, prévenir que l'humidité uh, Se, se disperse trop. Et puis aussi, um, when you're leaving it, the um, it'll sort of equalize different parts if it's uh, if it's kept in a really sort of um, stable um, climate. Then the all the clay will begin to to have the same level of um, it'll just balance out the humidity, so you won't have a sloppy bit at the top and and uh, and dry bits. So um, so what I would be doing now is uh, I would be thinking about maybe making the teeth since it's, you know, I'm 
getting a little uncomfortable with how much water. Um, so I, yeah, I'm gonna just quickly make some, some tea. And uh, like I mentioned, you know, no bird today has tea. And um, so uh, we'd have to, and teeth fossils were not found of, of this, particular, this particular bird. Um, so uh, no teeth fossils were found, tooth fossils. So um, I'm going to just, I'm just gonna have to imagine um, what, uh, what that would, uh, what the teeth would have to look like. I think for, um, if I looked at my, um, at other prehistoric birds from uh, like the Pionis, their teeth uh, seem quite hunty and quite, quite pointy. So I'm, I'm gonna follow that um, suit and then just kind of imagine like how they would fit into the face. And um, I think what I'll, what I'll do as well, I can also start making uh, the eyeball and, uh, and placing that into the socket if, um, if I'm, uh, if I'm wanting to, uh, you know, develop it a little more quickly and, and uh, give it a little uh, expression. Um, now in terms of paint, uh, what colors I would paint, I'm thinking again of my, my colors. Um, prehistoric birds, we don't, you know, fossils don't have colors. So um, we could use really any color that we want. And uh, I mean, we could sort of use the colors of a cormorant, but uh, cormorants are even, different cormorants are, are did, although they're predominantly dark, um, they have uh, they have different, uh, different coloration. So, um, I'm just uh, moving this thing along. But uh, yeah, I mean, birds, if you, I mean, color can be so important too, uh, when you're making um, a bird, for instance, because um, colors are used um, so much in, in communication uh, with uh, birds. So I'm just sort of tailoring, even though it's a little wet for me right now, trying to speed it up. Alors, j'essaie d'aller au plus vite. Je parlais des couleurs, parce qu'on sait pas que sont les couleurs de d'un animal préhistorique parce que c'est pas c'est pas préservé dans les euh, fossiles alors euh, c'est euh, bon c'est on peut euh, on peut faire nos propres couleurs okay. um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to add some more of the that predatory element that I liked of the of the beak it's so wet that I talked a lot about scoring and you know to add adding on, but um, my clay is much, much wetter than I would normally um, be working with. So um, it's okay if I just uh, add this on here. And um, um, so we noticed that in my skeleton here, you can see the, the mouth went really below the, the eye socket. So it's kind of what I'm. Uh, let me see that here. I'm going right, right below, and um, then I'm going to put. Uh, I'm going to put my eyeball in, and uh, when I'm doing that, I could, uh, I could just do, uh, do it in a painterly way. I could paint uh, cormorants have incredibly gorgeous eyeballs and with these uh, bright turquoise. I'm not thinking of turquoise right now. Um, and some of them are yellows and greens and just like fantastical colored eyes, even though they're, they're, uh, their plumage is very dull, but um, something else that you can get uh, that gives a lot of uh, depth that you can do, ce qu'on peut faire, c'est uh, pour uh, donner l'expression à l'œil, c'est on peut uh, creuser et ça, so you can see the shadows and you donne the, uh, the du poppy, so it looks like, uh, see, you can see it looks like, uh, even though I haven't painted anything on it, um, it looks like uh, the pupil of the eye. So that's something 
that you can think about if you're not using color in your ceramics, um, in your sculpture, is that um, it isn't painting. Uh, I love ceramics because you can paint it, but also it has this quality uh, where you can use light and shadow. So even though I haven't painted anything on this eye, um, you can see, and this was used very much in classical uh, Greek sculpture, um, that the, the iris was, um, did I say pu the pupil, um, and maybe the iris too, uh, was, the iris was maybe carved at a, a little bit, uh, uh, carved in, but not as much as the pupil. So then the shadow on, um, on the piece will, um, will give you, uh, it gives its own, um, it, it gives you a depth and it gives you details and information that ça nous donne des informations, des informations euh, et ça nous, c'est dans une zone, dans une zone c'est un trompe l'œil parce que ce qui est euh, donné sur la surface, because um, the pupil is not, well I guess it is a hole but it's, it's, um, it's covered. So um, anyway, it gives this illusion of, uh, of, um, of the pupil. And, uh, and that's something that you can, you know, carving into your piece, even if you're not um, thinking to use colors, um, that's, uh, that's something that you can also, um, that's also something that you can do. I think my fellow here is looking pretty happy. <laughs> I must be in a good mood today. Um, so we can, um, we can just keep, you know, being responsive to, um, to what is um, what's happening in front of us. I think a lot of it is uh, is accidental as well um, because the clay itself is, you know, it's moving around, it's shifting around. It has a, it's being temperamental. Um, I'm just making an adjustment for the bill here. And, um, oh, I see a question from David. The bird is? Um, I, oh, lots of chats. Um, uh, do, do, do. Yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Sorry, it took so long to, to see that. Uh, just closing my. Unfortunately, um, what's happened is that I have uh, clay on my finger. <laughs> So it's not, uh, okay, sorry, I'm back. I just realized I can't really touch the screen because I have clay, so it's not being, uh, it's not being responsive to that. Thank you, David. Um, I'll wipe my hands. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. So yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to bring it to life. Um, I don't have my, um, my blowtorch with me here today. It's generally, it's a, another tool that, uh, that I would use is a, a blowtorch or a blow dryer. So if I wanted to get, um, if I wanted to get something, uh, a piece um, to uh, to to um, harden up, to firm up in a, in a particular area, I am um, I would force that very quickly, and. Uh, and yeah, David, you mentioned um, bringing something to life. And I think that's really, uh, you know, that's something that element of play is something that I, um, that I actually do. Um, I do a lot of in my, uh, in my work. So what, uh, even when I'm, when I'm making, um, I'll do, um, for instance, because I have other work on, on this subject. So maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll fly the work around or uh, I'll animate it, you know, a puppetry, uh, just for my own personal, um, uh, just to inform myself and to, to amuse myself. Um, alors, je fais, je, je joue aussi avec les, les objets que, que je fais parce que c'est de, c'est de la sculpture et puis, alors, c'est pas, um, c'est pas, L'intention, ce n'est pas de juste de voir comme une peinture, comme à la face, comme euh, juste simplement d'une direction. 
Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's very important that, uh, you know, to remember that, that, um, that it's going to be seen from um, many, many different angles. And, um, and just to be, um, just to always be engaged with it as a three-dimensional object. And um, I think that that's the, the strength of, um, of, of clay for me is that I didn't have to give up even though I trained as a, as a painter and I really, you know, painting is um, extremely important to me. I don't have to, I don't, and I don't have to give that up, but at the same time, um, sculpture allows you to have that sort of uh, a, um, a different experience every time. And, and it allows the, the viewer to have uh, a different experience with the work than, than maybe I, than maybe I even um, anticipated. For instance, if uh, you know if someone comes in and they're, they're I don't know, maybe five years old and and this tall, they'll they'll see the sculpture much uh, much differently than than um, a basketball player or <laughs> who would be looking down on it. So I like that idea that it's it's um, it's dynamic. If you're someone who runs around and you're uh, runs around the work, it's, it's a different experience um, rather than a painting, which, um, you know, we all bring something different to, to all mediums, but it's uh, this a little more um, openness, open-endedness with sculpture. And then, um, and then of course, there's the, the potential of the painted surface as well that, that uh, I don't have to give up. And also that, you know, it doesn't read in, a, in the same, in the same way because um you again you'll be observing it from different angles so um yeah so that's where if i feel like if ever you feel like um where you know you're sort of losing the shape then you know maybe you can um look back at your skull and make sure you're aligning things uh properly so, so, um, you know, squaring up, I think, uh, is what uh, artists call it, where you just, um, I mean, I, I, I want to have a certain um, fluidity in the work, but I also, you know, sometimes I want to, you know, bring it back, I want to rein it in a little bit. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just a process of, of uh, of going back and forth and you know having fun and then getting serious and getting uh getting um you know really wanting to get the work to do something specific as well and i'll say say uh c'est ça c'est juste de, de vraiment apprendre à être engagé avec uh, ce que tu fais et des fois faire comme um, peut-être tu veux encore de, de la précision ou um, Comme ici, euh, comme je lui ai dit, j'adore tellement cette, cette petite euh, euh, place sur le bec, qui est comme vraiment une ligne très souple, très douce. Euh, et puis, il y a la, la contradiction ici avec euh, celui qui est plus, euh, plus dur. So my, my tooth is sort it's funny because um, the idea that uh, the teeth really, um, I find so challenging, but I mean, so exciting, but it feels like where, where did the teeth go in the beak? <laughs> it just, because um, I, I see so many birds around my house and at the bird feeder and I, I watch them feeding and it, it just doesn't seem like there's room in the bill for, for all those little teeth. But, uh, alors, c'est 
So it helps us to see the world differently. And you know, you often hear that, but what it what that means is that you're you're paying attention to you know really specific details um, that um, that you wouldn't have noticed before. So it's not that you're you know well, maybe your world perspective has changed, but uh, it's often just very specific um, little details, and then that kind of by noticing those little details, it kind of adds up to maybe changing your your world perspective. But uh, I think that happens gradually, like everything in nature. Alors, je me je me lève ici sur ce bas-ci. Et puis, mais pourvu que c'est un animal qui qui fait la chasse, je vais faire plus. Les yeux souvent sont ils ont du noir ou c'est très les animaux de chasse, même comme les chats, il y a beaucoup de 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 comme de de contraste sur l'œil. Peut-être c'est je sais pas. Pourquoi? I'm not quite sure why there's the eyes are you know very outlined almost like a in makeup they're very maybe if someone knows why that is they can they can tell me um, any biologist in the group <laughs> um, so yeah I'd like to know why uh, cats also often have that predatory animals seem to have I guess a lot of animals have that that black line the black eyeliner. Um, but, uh, so, um, so yeah, so now I think I've, I've pretty much taken this, um, uh, yeah, I guess I would be, you know, maybe, uh, when, if this were fired, I would be adding, um, some, my color to it, maybe, a um, probably a black because I, I don't know, honestly, I'm, I, I like the cormorants. J'adore tellement les, les cormorants que je veux uh, garder cet aspect. Um, when you are painting it, um, you can do, if you're, well, if you're painting directly on the clay or if you're painting um, on, a, on a slip, you can do a technique called uh, scraffito. Well, madame, here's my blade. C'est une technique où on peut comme euh, mettre, c'est it's almost like etching dans sur euh, sur la surface. Alors on peut mettre euh, beaucoup de détails. Et puis euh, so I don't have uh, all my colors of paints here, but um, c'est juste pour me donner comme un peu euh, Idée. Souvent, il euh, y, y avait un peu, un peu de jaune dans le bec. A lot of bills are yellow or pink or uh, maybe even baby blue. And so the goldy colors. And, uh, but of course, you know, um, you can always use your imagination and, and uh, Tu peux utiliser l'imagination à n'importe quel point. Alors, je pense que je vais laisser mon ami ici. Est-ce que vous pouvez la voir? Bon. On ne voit pas vraiment les dents. Peut-être que je vais en mettre juste une. Je vais mettre un petit dent euh, comme de à bec <rire> pour, euh, pour dire qu'il va pouvoir euh, ouvrir son, son œuf. Alors, je vais. Je vais le laisser comme ça et puis euh, peut-être je vais le finir plus tard et je vais le mettre au four et je pourrais monter des, des photos sur, euh, sur um, les réseaux sociaux. Maybe I'll finish this piece and, and uh, put pictures on uh, social media or uh, um, maybe I'll also have this piece in my exhibition of, um, at LA Pie in September. Um, but I'll leave this for now because it's getting quite damp and I'll uh, wash my hands so that um, I can take questions if anyone has any questions. I'll just uh, give it to me. Ah.
Okay. Uh, yeah. So I'll, uh, there we are. And uh, I'll see if there's any questions that I haven't gotten to. Uh, Beth, Shepard, what kind of paint do you, uh, what kind of do you paint do you usually use uh, when the clay is wet? Well, um, I, don't, I don't always paint uh, when the clay is wet. Uh, but if I did, um, yeah, I could use a, a stain. I would use a stain, particularly if I'm using a cone 10, because the, um, the underglaze paints will, um, they'll uh, melt um, at that temperature. Um, uh, As-tu l'idée comme tu vas le présenter sur un pied? Ah, bonne question. So uh, Denise has asked um, how I will present this bird and um, what, uh, what I would do, um, I think, um, turn this around, uh, I can see my, the mess I've made. Um, what I could do is I could actually, um, uh, I could incorporate this into a larger work. If I wanted to make um, this, make the, the body of, the, of this bird, I, I could um, use the, the rest of my clay to make this, keep this very, very damp. I would probably, uh, you know, put it in a, in a sealed container and keep it very damp and then um, attach, I could attach this head by uh, scoring it. Um, sometimes I've also added um, other materials to, you know, suggest a body like the, the cattails or, um, or even um, like these, uh, these pieces that I'm making here are just a, are a, in the form of a vase. So it's just a, a vessel shape that I've, um, that I've put the head on. So, alors, uh, je pourrais faire le corps en, en argile et après mettre la tête dessus, comme, uh, comme j'ai montré où je faisais de, comme assez de, de texture pour que ça prenne, et puis le garder très, très humide, uh, ou bien utiliser d'autres matériaux comme les, les canoës avec, uh, que j'ai pris uh, ailleurs, ou bien um, comme je pourrais faire comme ceci, où je fais la forme d'une base et puis alors je fais euh, la tête en premier et après ça un vaisseau et puis ça peut fonctionner comme, comme un vase et puis alors euh, c'est ça où je peux juste simplement le laisser euh, euh, comme cela sur um, so that's uh, that's Denise's uh, question so, oh is there more um, or chats. There's one more. Um, thank you, Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Um, uh, you have to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, great. So it is. That's right. It's um, um, the um, it will be recorded. These this whole session is recorded, and there's just so many fascinating topics. Hillary, I think you would love uh, John Carroll, who's coming up tomorrow, who's just like a. a brilliant uh, singer songwriter um, um, uh, just there's been so many really fascinating and uh, visual artists uh, just exceptional artists who presented there have been you know really interesting talks on on things like how um, how not to fall which is you know very uh, very important for us aging artists um, how not to um, how to mix medications without adverse effects. I mean, these are all things that will affect your art. I'm always, uh, okay, someone else is asking about uh, how do I get large piece into the kiln? Ah, yeah, yeah, that's quite, um, that can be quite challenging. Um, I have, sometimes I build like the, the piece um, that I'm making, um, the piece that I'm making right now, um, for Galerie Montcam, uh, I actually made most of it in the kiln. So I have a very large kiln, but I um, and I just almost climb into it in a sense. Um, when you're working in person, can you or do you fire more than once for your glazes? Uh, uh, si je, je, la première question c'était uh, comment tu, um, pour cuire très grand, and I said, there I said that um, uh, des fois je fais la construction dans le four propre and um, 
cette question, c'est how many times do I fire? Combien de fois que je, je le mets au four? Et ça peut aller comme 4, 5, euh, ça peut aller beaucoup de fois. Um, si je mets la sous-glaçure, juste le bisque, après ça, le, la sous-glaçure, après ça, euh, je vais jusqu'à um, content, alors très, très chaud. Après ça, une autre couche de, de glaçure. Si j'aime pas les couleurs, euh, si, si, si tu fais très haut, if you fire very hot, the colors can burn off. Alors, je vais le remettre. C'est juste comme faire, euh, si je suis, euh, j'aime ce que j'ai, je vais arrêter, mais euh, alors, oui, 4-5 fois. Il ne faut pas trop, trop aller parce que ça, ça va devenir, si tu vas comme 10-20 fois, peut-être ça va être de moins en moins fort. L'argile va comme se, se, vraiment, will, se de, decompose itself. Too much will fire away. Um, or, you know, there's every time you go in, there's chance of it cracking or breaking or, you know, all those terrible things that we don't like to talk about. Um, so, yeah, four times, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, et questions? Any more questions? Lisa, can mm -hmm. you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Oh, great. Um, are, there, are there different types of clays that can be used? Or is all, is, is, are there different types of clays that can be used for sculptures? Or is all clay the same? No, no, there are many uh, different types. I use mostly, right now I use um, uh, a cone 10 porcelain, which is very, very high fired. Um, I find that it, um, when you fire it that high, there's sort of a, 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 a slumping kind of melting effect that, that occurs that I find is, um, I, I'm, I just really enjoy and, and the colors are, are almost, uh, They're, they're stronger and they're also paler in some ways. Um, and it, but it, it's just, I like the, the resonance that that has. Um, but then there's porcelains that you can fire at lower temperatures. Uh, there are stoneware clays, which are used more for uh, functional work that are, have, that are um, more solid. Um, they're uh, less prone to cracking. Um, So it's used more in dinnerware and um, like every day for everyday use. Um, the porcelain that I use also has a, a translucent quality, um, but also there, there are clay. Sometimes I go out um, because here in Chelsea, uh, we are on in Wakefield and I guess in, maybe in the Ottawa too, I'm not sure, uh, but we are on a, a, a large clay bed. Uh, of, it's called Lita clay. And I'm just looking around my studio to see, I don't see any pieces that I have right now, but sometimes I'll go out and um, I did a lot of that during uh, COVID uh, when I couldn't get supp supplies, particularly because um, we couldn't go to Ottawa, um, we couldn't cross the border and the, even my supplier in Ottawa wasn't, um, wasn't open and we couldn't go to Ottawa anyway and you couldn't cross to Montreal to get clay and it's very expensive to ship. so. Um, I was doing more foraging of clay, which is, a, it's an earthenware clay, and it takes a lot of work to, um, to be able to make it malleable. It's very, it's not, um, it doesn't have, a lot of the clays that you buy commercially have been um, uh, processed to, and had additions to make them easier to work with. Alors, c'est plus facile, l'argile que tu achètes a plus de, de c'est plus, um, comme travailler pour que toi, uh, tu peux le, le travailler avec facilement. So, um, uh, yeah, so, sorry, there's another question. I hope that answered your question, um, yes, David. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just to go to, I just saw there's a, another question and from Paul, what cone do you fire the Lita clay at? Ah, that's a, it's an earthenware. Uh, So um, that would be cone 04. And um, yeah, so, um, so that's a, it's an earthenware clay and it fires when you see it, when you find it, it's kind of gray, gr gray green. And then when you fire it, it's like this beautiful, warm, gentle, blushed kind of red color. I love it, mm. uh, but it's quite hard to work with. Mm. 
Um, so, but eventually, yeah, but it is nice too. So, and when you don't have access to, to other clays and um, I think it's really, it's always good to challenge yourself as with, with clay when, um, for instance, when I was in Taiwan, I had, you know, very different uh, clays that I hadn't worked with and different glazing techniques. And, uh, and I think you just, when you are forced to, to do something new, you, uh, you grow. So, um, yeah. Does anybody have any more questions for Lisa? Also, any more I, questions? I'd just like to thank you for, for sharing that. I loved watching you do your work. And uh, thank you, especially for sharing that emotional element that I suspect goes into every single thing you make. Um, it, it was really, really lovely. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, uh, David, for, <laughs> for managing all of this crew and uh, setting it up i appreciated it very much it's our it's yeah, our well, pleasure yeah absolutely yeah i'm just uh so honored to be part of this uh this fantastic series um merci denis merci beaucoup thanks aaron um uh yeah many thanks paul uh it's uh yeah it's really been just uh just a fantastic i think way to connect and um, you know, I'd been thinking about how it's because it's local. Um, we may, you know, once this, uh, this horrible pandemic is over and we can go out, we'll have these connections, you know, I'll be able to, to, you know, see a, a maybe I'll see a dance performance and say, oh, I, you know, I, um, I saw you on, on the PAL series and, you know, really, you really helped me get active and, when you know in that long winter and so I think it's going to be forging connections into the future that that we may not uh we may not have had otherwise so I really appreciate just you know um that the series exists because of that alors j'apprécie j'apprécie énormément et puis um que que Paul a offert cette série juste pour, pour, pour moi-même and, and I appreciate everyone that uh, that joined us today that I think artists being in our studios were, were so isolated. I mean, we're used to working long hours and, you know, just by ourselves and, and amusing ourselves by creating uh, crazy um, stories with our sculptures. But at the same time, um, it's very important for us to get that feedback to uh, to know that our work is resonating and um, and to you know just to to hear that there's um, an emotional resonance and uh, so you know thank you pal for for um, and David for offering that and thank you to everyone who who came today. Je vous remercie énormément. Thank you very much, Lisa. I, I, I pal surely echoes your comments. Um, what I, uh, I, I should mention to the audience that uh, Lisa originally was scheduled to give a session at our Spotlight 2021 uh, series, which was back in February and March. Uh, we had 14, sorry, we had 13 presentations, but technically we had 14 slots. Uh, Lisa, couldn't, uh, Lisa couldn't make it because of some scheduling conflicts. So that's the reason why we brought her back. And, the other thing is that um, she's provided the only um, sort of sculpture ceramics uh, presentation that uh, that we've had. So really, it, it's really wonderful. It really rounds out, um, um, you know, that 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 part of of artistic endeavors uh, because we were lacking, uh, you know, that sculpture ceramic arts uh, component. So it's really wonderful to have her back. Um, I just wanted to say one other thing is that I, I was, you know, I was taking some notes and you said a really, a really interesting phrase that it's important to develop a relationship with your work. And I thought that was really, that's really a profound statement because that is a statement that applies to everything, almost any, any creative endeavor, whether or not you're writing an essay. Uh, and and I sort of, I, I'm alluding a lot to students that, you know, when you're in high school, university, you're doing these, you're doing coursework because you have to do it. But, you know, if you change your uh, perspective and look at it as developing a relationship with something that 
you know, doesn't exist when you first start, whether it's a story, whether it's a piece of music, uh, 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 a piece of choreography, whatever. You, know, you develop a relationship with it and, you know, you put your emotion, your heart and soul into it. And it really, really makes a difference. And we certainly saw that in your uh, developing uh, the bird, the head of the bird today, that, um, y- you know, your attention to detail is, is just phenomenal. And that attention to detail in whatever we do is so important because especially in this fast pa- fast-paced digital world where we're just, you know, clicking from one thing to another, this sort of slowing down, artistic endeavor, uh, attention to detail uh, is, is so important. And I think it just makes us better people. And uh, we appreciate the world to a much greater degree. So anyway, so I want to uh, thank you again, Lisa, for a really wonderful uh, presentation. I learned a lot. I haven't, I haven't done you know, clay sculpture since I think public school, but uh, you certainly, uh, I, I think you certainly um, um, you know, way, uh, awoken a lot of uh, uh, our, our artistic abilities in a lot of people today. So thank you for that. Uh, to the audience, again, this, this presentation will be, um, uh, it is being recorded and will be uploaded on the PALP YouTube channel. As Lisa mentioned, uh, tomorrow evening, our first evening performance will be John Carroll, who is a jazz folk blues singer uh, he performed recently at the uh, benefit for the Mayfair Theater, which has been experiencing some uh, financial difficulties. And um, uh, so he'll be, he'll be um, performing tomorrow and also will be reflecting on, um, you know, what, what has inspired him through the pandemic, uh, what he's learned, uh, you know, what, where he is at in terms of his career, and what's going to propel them forward. So I would encourage you all to, uh, to sign into that. And, uh, and many more uh, sessions and presenta- presentations to take us to the end of, end of June, which is only two weeks away. Summer's going too fast. So thank you for joining in today. Really, really wonderful. Lisa, thank you so much for participating and uh, be well and uh, let's all stay in touch. Take care. Thank you. Absolutely. My total pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.